Welcome to week one of Dominique Medici Art Academy. I'm Dominique Medici. Thanks for joining. So the first year is all about drawing. And we start with the most simple, basic concepts and exercises. And over the course of the year, we build up to something very sophisticated. So we really go from like a blank piece of paper to something like this drawing of my dad. So I want this experience to be as straightforward and as enjoyable as possible. We don't have to be born with talent. Art is a skill we can develop, right? But we're gonna break it up so that it's into manageable pieces. This is the way to learn. So the only prerequisite is interest and effort, right? The fruits come by themselves over time. It's like a garden, you know, we tend to watering the plant, the fruit grows by itself. There's nothing we need to do directly to make that happen. So we're in for the long haul. You know, let self-criticism take a back seat. It really is a hindrance in our learning process. Don't worry what things look like. You look back in a year's time, you'll be shocked at how much ground you've covered. All we ever will talk about is four things. Proportion, value, color, and edge. That's it. Over time, we go really deep into each one of these. It's like layers of an onion. You peel one off and there's more and there's more and there's more. And so a simple concept is very far reaching. We start with gesture today and with something very simple, a circle. But it's not so simple if you take it seriously. All right, so here's just a standard piece of printer paper. This is all we need to start. And I have a pencil, right? Um, we'll talk a little bit more about materials later, but I, let's just, you know, get the experience of just drawing, right? Let's just get right into it. So we start with gesture, right? The idea here is when we're trying to draw something, one of the ideas is just go for it. Use your intuition just to launch into the drawing. And don't think about it too much. What we do over time is then we observe what we did and then we refine it. But the idea is first just to do it, right? So we're gonna draw a circle. Now, why a circle? It symbolizes wholeness, right? It's every point from the center is the same. It's everywhere we look in the world, from a wheel, to the world itself, right? Circles are everywhere. It's a fundamental building block when it comes to drawing and painting. So we're gonna start with that. There's actually a great story about a circle and the early Renaissance master Giotto apparently was approached by the Pope and the Pope wanted a drawing of Giotto's for their competition. And Giotto apparently just drew a circle a perfect circle in red ink. He gave it to the courtier who thought he was making fun of him. And he's like, are you serious? And he's like, no, trust me, the Pope will understand. So he takes Giotto's drawing along with all the others, gives it to the Pope, the Pope sees it, and says, ah, this is my guy right here. To draw a perfect circle is very hard, but to effortlessly do that is really impressive. So. That's where we're gonna start. Okay, right, so this is what we should do. For the first piece of paper, all we're doing is just getting comfortable holding a pencil on a paper. And we're just drawing circles, right? This is a great exercise. You know, if we were singing, it's the same idea. We're just warming up. Draw them at different sizes, big and small. Fill up the entire page. Now with each one, let your attention refine so that each one becomes a little more perfect and maybe you end up slowing down a little bit. So that's the first exercise. Next exercise, take a fresh piece of paper. This one we're going to spend a little more time on.
try to get your paper as straight as you can on the board, as um, plumb as you can. Now, with the pencil being very light, very light on the page, let's just start drawing a bigger circle. Right? One of the reasons we want to keep it super light is that corrections are easier to make when there's not much on the page. So I'm looking at my drawing and what do I see? Well, it looks like it's weighted on the bottom because it's a little flatter here. It seems to get a little flat over here as well as here. Right? A perfect circle is always a, a curve. There's no points that get flatter, right? There's a little bit of a plane here forming. So a little bit over here too, a little bit of a straight line. So what we can do, take an eraser, here's a kneaded eraser. The nice thing about a kneaded eraser is you can turn it into a point, which helps you be quite precise about what you're erasing. We could also use a standard white eraser. Whatever you have, doesn't matter as long as it works. Right, so let's get rid of the things that we know are not working. And then we take a look again. And then I'm going to say, okay, this wants to open up a little. It wants to round a little bit more. And then you step back and you look again. The way that we always work on things, right? This is the lesson we'll learn now, and we'll talk about it again and again and again. You step back and you just take a look and say, what stands out? What part stands out? So now I'm aware over here. It's a little too flat. We want to be more rounded. And it's interesting. Each correction makes you aware of a different part of the circle and different parts needing correction. So I'm noticing here is a little too flat. So I open that up, round it out a little bit. Now I'm aware over here and over here, right? So again, right? So our goal always start from intuition, then use observation to refine what we did. The interesting part about that, as long as you don't give up, you eventually get it. You get the correction. We could go on and on like this, but there is something that we can do to help us. And that's, let's divide it in half, right? If we just divide it in half, we then have two quadrants. And we can start looking if they are symmetrical, right? That will help. That will give us a little insight. Um, so let's start with a horizon line. Right? We're going to start with a straight line to divide it in half. And you're going to have to guess where that line is. Don't measure it. Right? So the way that I like us to train is we always work from observation and then we verify through measuring. But we're not talking about measuring yet. Right now we're still just doing this. Right? So get a nice straight line. Don't necessarily use a ruler. Okay, see if it's halfway. If it's not quite halfway, erase it and redraw it. For me, it's looking okay. I think it's a little low, so maybe I'll just bring it up just a hair. You see, here's another challenge. We went from talking about circles, now we've introduced a concept of a straight line. And the, the thing that's just as surprising about a straight line as about a circle is how difficult it is to draw a straight line, right? It's kind of surprising. This is a great exercise for us. This is kind of the homework assignment for you guys. So one of the ideas is let's just draw straight lines to get comfortable holding a pencil, to get comfortable with the amount of pressure, right? And we draw straight lines in the shape of a box. What I mean by that is the distance between each one of them is exactly the same. The lines should be perfectly vertical with the same amount of line weight, same amount of pressure, and we finish 
when we end up with a square. Right? So such a simple exercise, but it teaches us something. So, right, that will help us draw this line really nicely. Right, so erase the previous one. If you have a lot of lines developing here, um, don't worry, just redraw it. You might find it a little more comfortable to hold the brush like this or the pencil. Right, so we're leading from the back. So pulling a straight line across. This is another thing we'll get comfortable with, like the way that we want to hold. Right, the way that we write is not necessarily the most comfortable way to draw. So you might want to hold your pencil like this, or like this. In either way, you can use your finger or a knuckle to rest on the surface so that you're not putting direct pressure on the point. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just start becoming aware of how this arc looks against this one. This one is way fuller if we look at this as a shape than this, right? We're a little too full. So we want to come in. I'm going to bring it a little, little bit smaller. Not only that, but this side is much more rounded. This side is a little more angular. So we want to try and refine that. Now it's interesting, right? Now this is looking a little wide, the upper, upper arc. So this one also comes in a little bit. Now it gets a little pointy over here. So maybe this also comes in. So, right, slowly, slowly, it's beginning to look a little better. Now, from here, what could we do? Well, we could also introduce the vertical, right, dividing this circle in half, right? So, just dividing a circle in half and in length gives us four quadrants, and it's much easier to start judging those arcs, right? Much easier. And, right, we want this one to be as curved as this, and the same as this, as to this, but then the same thing across as a mirror. So as you can see, drawing a perfect circle is really hard. And you can see why Giotto won the competition. So let's talk a little bit about materials. I really love these pencils. These are called Tombow Mono Line, and this is an HB. In the beginning, all we're going to be using is HBs. You can buy these online. I think there's a description in the link for most of the materials I'll be using. So feel free to use that. And I have two. It's usually a good idea to have two or three of the pencils you're working with sharp and ready to go. It's also nice to take breaks every 20 minutes or so, and that's also a nice time to sharpen, give your eyes a little rest before getting back to the work. Two types of erasers I'm mostly using. A kneaded eraser. This is Prismacolor, I think, and just a standard gray kneaded eraser. And I think this is a Staedtler white racer. Can't remember what it's called. But I'll, again, I'll link all this stuff in the description. And then paper, right? So for paper, I have a couple options to share with you. So I'm a big fan of Canson. 
I think they make great products. I've been using them for many years now. And these are very affordable. Easily you can get these at your local art store, no, no problem. This is a heavier grade paper. This is a Bristol paper, it's super smooth. So you get a lot of control and you're not sort of thrown off by the texture of the paper. And the weight of this is 260 grams. So it's a pretty heavy, heavy paper. Then there's this paper here, which is a watercolor paper, it has a little bit of texture on it. Usually one side's a little rougher, a little, a little smoother on the other. I tend to like to use the smoother side. But this is a 300 gram paper. Okay, so keep practicing, right? The first lesson is just about getting comfortable with the board, the pencil, the materials, the line pressure. You know, getting comfortable with drawing a simple shape so if you have time, keep practicing. It's great. And if you're curious about what's happening in the next episode, we're going to go from one shape to two, right? And with, when we get two shapes, we get a relationship. And there's a lot of things to talk about for that. If you enjoyed this lesson and want to be notified about the next, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when a new episode uploads. Also, at the end of the month, there's going to be a weekend workshop where we tie all these lessons together. So if you would like to sign up for that, see the registration link in the description below. Thanks and see you in the next video.